A big round of applause for Akiva for being the thinnest Jew in Borough Park. There is nobody. The Alula looks. Oh, thank you very much. How are you? How are you? Look, I love this. This is my favorite table. You guys all at the store of a YouTube video. Put your little hats and your little. You're gorgeous, gorgeous. Look at this guy too. This is an amazing sweater. How are you? Terrific, terrific. This is great. Over here is a shave of brachas. How are you? Yeah, I've been on TV now. I'm performing in a sushi bar. You understand? It's over for me. And one more time for your speaker, the boss that spoke before. I know he doesn't deserve it. He was the worst. He bored himself after 10 minutes. Did you see how he was? Oh, I know, yeah. Then we have. We met, last year we had eight people. Now we have 12 people. Now we have. Here's a certificate for you and uh, and for her too. Let's give her something too. And uh, yeah, 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 yeah. he fell asleep in the middle of his own presentation. Just so much fun being in Borough Park. Could you imagine any sentence beginning like that? Being in Borough Park and nobody gave me the keep it clean speech. I never got the key. When you perform in this area, they give you the keep it clean. You gotta keep it clean. You gotta keep it clean. Whatever you do at Jewish event, you gotta keep it clean. Then they give you the disclaimer, not for me. Not for me. I'd love to see your regular act. As if my regular act had a pole and two midgets. You gotta keep it clean. Not for me. I perform at a shaver process. Don't worry about what that is. In Borough Park. The woman that hired me was not wearing a wig. She was wearing a helmet. With an Hermes schmata wrapped around it. Her husband, a nine-foot chassid, right? With the white socks and the, the fur hat that goes in the air. It's like on crack, right? The spudik it's called, right? They come over and say to me, you gotta keep the show clean. Not for us. We're not that religious. But the in-laws, they're from Lakewood. Lakewood's a place that's more miserable than this. How are ya? You're from Quality? Congrats, you got to come here, right? Because I heard someone over there gave a real keep it clean speech. Right? Okay, well tell her it's not that clean. All right, terrific. How are you? Are you the chief rabbi here? Okay. The Mashiach. This is so much fun, folks. This is so much fun. I live in, and I, it's a, for me, it's a, it's a treat. I live in the city right here. I, it's a 20 minute drive for me. This is so, and I travel a lot. I really do. You don't know how much I travel. Not just New York and LA, that crap in the middle. That oh, Idaho. Well, traveling is so, it's the worst. It's the worst. But one thing that's nice is you get out of New York and see beautiful airports we have in this country. Arizona, right, Morty? Remember Arizona? We landed there. In the middle of a, of, a, of a desert, there's a runway. The guy's got miles to land, puts an easy pass. It's beautiful. Land in LaGuardia, it's like landing in the back of an aircraft carrier. And TSA in the middle of the country, have you seen them? Have you seen them? They're adorable. Little sweet little, hi y'all down, hi y'all from, hi y'all from, hi y'all. Hey y'all, yeah, 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 at six in the morning. Where yeah, 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 yeah. TSA in New York, you think they give a damn about you or your safety? They have one concern and one concern only, their 15 minute break, right? See, Sharissa, when you in had your 15? What well, happened was your mom had asked me, I'm gonna take my break, so I had to have them. Why you ain't take your laptop out your bag? Damn! People don't understand! Then they pulled my bag off. They pulled my bag off, right? Now there's a four foot little TSA guy with an ISIS bandana asking me about my luggage. He's asking me, Morty, about my luggage. That's where we are in the war on terror, that he's got questions for me about, and you wanna know what he's asking? Did you pack your own bag? Huh? What did you say? Did, did, you, did you pack your own bag? Did I pack my own bag? Did you pack my bag? No, then we're okay. Did you pack your own bag? It's 2016, the entire world's falling apart. And he's asking, did you pack your own bag? As if that's gonna foil the plot. Did you pack your own bag? Yeah. Did I pack my own bag? No. Here's what happened. 
Last night I'm home, and my buddy Anwar Ben El Kus Emmet came over, <laughs> and we're watching Netflix. Zero Dark Thirty. He didn't care for the ending at all. But afterwards, he says, "You flying out tomorrow?" Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But did you pack it? No, no, yeah. Well, let me pack for you. <laughs> Thanks, Anwar. So now you gotta understand. I have a whole bunch of material just for people who look like this. And then I got my stuff just for you, and we gotta find the medium. So the best thing is just to talk about Trump. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, are you guys upset? <laughs> Who here is super anti-Trump? My wife. You are. You are. Between you and me, you know you're full of shit. <laughs> Everybody in here has some sick, twisted, demented, dark part of their soul that wants to see where the hell this is going. <laughs> Come on, four years of Hillary, take an Ambi and you got the same situation. I'll tell you, I fly in America, I perform in America, I know, what. I knew he was gonna win. I knew, I fly, in, you, you, you remember election night, that map, it was like a Verizon commercial. Do you guys own Verizon too? No, okay. I knew he was gonna win because America wants what everybody else has and everybody else has a maniac governing their country. We want our own maniac. North Korea has an Asian cabbage patch kid that's pressing the bombs, trying out. We want our own maniac. I knew he was gonna win, but now he got the job, he doesn't even want it, right? He doesn't really, come on, he was shocked. At first he goes, wait, 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 I got what, me, I'm the president? No, 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 I don't wanna do this. Who, wait, wait, I got, I got a guy, where are the guys that wanted this job? Let me find them. Romney, come here, come here. I'm gonna ship you to Afghanistan and Pakistan and from Pakistan. You're gonna go all these places that I'm never gonna go to. Who else wants me? That's it, the fat governor, Krispy Kreme. Come over here, Chris Krispy Kreme. You're the secretary of breakfast. Every morning I wanna see donuts and coffee and my Jewish son in law make sure there's a bagel and a bialy for him. Yeah, he doesn't want this job. He doesn't want it. And everybody's running around crying. Are you one of those guys crying, he's not my president, you the, the victim people? Because there really is only one victim in this entire election. And that is Melania. Melania. Have you seen her? Oh my, don't tell me you haven't seen her. You've seen her a lot. Too much. She's everything. The poor thing, she doesn't want this job. She doesn't want to be first lady. Now she, all she wanted was, was, was a sugar daddy. That's all she wanted. Now she's first lady of America. The last thing she wants to do is stand in front of the dining hall in the White House every day. Uh, this is uh, uh, the ambassador for Babu Babuba. And uh, yes, from the African tribe of Babu Baya Baba. And he'll be wearing the bed sheets from the Lincoln bedroom. And just don't act awkward, bow and bow back. And now, who the hell wants that for four years? She doesn't want to know from this thing. I'll tell you how it all happened with her. You remember how it happened? In the middle of the campaign, out of nowhere, he's hocking his little, uh, we're going to make America great, and then he sees her and says, Melania, come say hi to the folks. She comes up, hi. We love everybody here in Iowa. Iowa, Iowa, ha. Why, 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 why. Tomorrow we are going to Milwaukee Kakaka, Milwaukee Waki, Milwaukee Kaki Kaki. She's never heard of these places. I want to know what they were talking about driving around America in that big suburban. What were they talking about? Donald. Donald, what is Walmart? Why it's everywhere? I knew she was gonna win the, I knew they were gonna win when after her first interview on CNN, the first one, before they began coaching her and giving her all Michelle's lines. They asked her, what would you do as first lady, right? And everybody knows the first lady always takes on a, a, a cause, like fat kids, or kids that can't read, or kids that are on drugs, and it goes nowhere, because every kid in the country is fat on drugs and can't read, so it took us with the first lady's causes. They asked her, what would you do? And she said, I will do nothing. <laughs> I will stand behind my husband in the Oval Office and make sure no intern comes near him. 
And now you got to be scared because he might be getting a little loose. He might be getting a little bit, uh, what's it called, uh, lax. Like not as strong as he was, like crazy before. And maybe he'll let in the, the refugees. Do, do, do you want the refugees in here, Mrs. I want Clinton? No, yes or no? Refugees or no refugees? All of our parents were refugees. Correct. All right. Well, thank you for that. That really helped the show. <laughs> now what's coming in here? Where are you going to put them? One of those square states that nobody's using? Is that where you're going to put them? No. And how are you going to check them in when they show up here? Who's going to check them in, Marty? Who? 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 TSA? Sharissa? She can't do it. Her nails are this long. She can only type with the balls of her fingers. Do you know how long that's going to take? <laughs> what your name is? <laughs> Mohammed. What's your son name? Mohammed. <laughs> What's your daughter name? Mohammed. And then when they get to the last name, where's that going to go, huh? What's your last name? Abdul bin al fadin Ashab al Asab al Habdunak. This means the one that said God and only God. <laughs> I'm going to take my 15 now. <laughs> you see, when the Jews came to America, we didn't give a crap what they called us. When, they, when, they, when, they, when their grandparents, the grandparents came to America, the Jews, we didn't care. What, we came in through Ellis Island. Some big Irish guy. What's your name? Uh, my name is Chaim Brechen. Yeah. We're going to call you Charles Bernstein. Perfect. Thank God. Charles Bernstein, Yankee Doodle. We just wanted to get in so we can start Ponzi schemes and things of that sort. We were in a rush. Ah, oh, this is terrific. You getting this? I want you to tell Martha that she missed the show. Uh, any questions? Uh, this, is, this is a great place for a gym. How's that for a segue? I belong to a gym. You got to keep this not, not so Jewish, right? Morty, there's a show going on. M M Morty's already... Uh, I should buy another company. Whoever puts the schmutz on the ceiling, maybe they're selling the company. Maybe they'll... Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, Find out who sells the dress that they put on the ceiling. <laughs> this is terrific. Me how? <laughs> I didn't want to lose them yet. I like this table. Now this is my favorite table also here. Wait, now what, what's, what's, what, what, what's your background? No, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, no. Chinese, I knew that. I just didn't want to automatically assume. Now, do you know I bought an apartment on the border of Chinatown? That's me. I'm the guy. And I thought I would pick up Chinese because I'm really good at accents. Morty, tell him. The best. But you can't, you can't learn Chinese. You know why? You can't pick it up. Because nobody speaks Chinese. Nobody speaks. They yell Chinese. The guy could be this far from the other and that could be a cultural thing that I don't know about, but when you're walking by and then you go, oh, hey, sir, what the hell? Sir, are you okay? It's not a normal language, you gotta admit, it's not a normal language. Because there's no words we share with you. Every other language in the world, there's words we share, right? Go anywhere in the world, the, the, the word restaurant. Restaurant, 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 anywhere you go. Do you ever see R-E-S-T and some crap afterwards? You know, a table, two chairs, a putt with an apron, cappuccino. Right? If some guy comes to me, any language here, give me any language. Italian. Some guy comes to me on the street, he's lost, from Italy. I'm going to figure out what he wants. And I put you this in I'm going to down the if you don't the museum, and I got to the metro subway. He's looking for the museum with the subway, right? Take the six train and get out of my face, you loser. Right? But Chinese, no, no matter how loud you yell in Chinese, there is no museum in There is no subway in Right? If I went to Italy, I went and I had my Italian to English book, right? And you said thank you. How do you say thank you in Italian? Grazie. I'm going to look it up, 
Right? There we go. Grazie means, oh, thank you. Well, grazie you. Now, now, how come I can look it up? Because I know where the word begins, and I know where the word ends. Right? There's no, so how you say, mahawe! And that, does that start with a muhao? Moe ha ho? Me ha we ha. That's it. So now that's the China. Now you, she, she, she's all like, mm-hmm, yep, 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 yep. Any other, any other nationalities we need to talk about before we go here? Which one? Which one dialect? Beijing. Barbados. Is that a part of Borough Park? <laughs> Barbados. No one's heard of Barbados. Uh, except for you. What up? What up? What up? What? Yes, that's one of the companies we own. Wawa. Wawa sa. Wawa sa. Wawa wa sa. Wawa wa sa. Do you have any idea what happened here at this company? No one. Brucky tried to explain it to me. I threw up. See, water and wasa for quality, and quality is duskany, and duskany is puskany, and this one did that one, and that one, so. And, and, but, well, they were indicted, so we would let them alone. So now, no one was indicted, folks. No one was indicted. Ah. So anyway, this is the season to eat like a, like a behave, like an animal, right? I did the opposite. I belonged to a gym. I figured, hey, why not go? It's called Equinox. Did you hear of it? Who heard of Equinox? It's a Greek word that means gay sex in the steam room. <laughs> Holy crap, what's going on? Morty, don't get me wrong. I took a trainer. A trainer with these guys. I bought a 10 pack of a trainer. They bring over this fattest guy you ever saw in your life. The gut and the chin and the like this. And he had the balls to ask me, what are your workout goals? I'm like, to never look like you. <laughs> Don't get me a real one. They went, they got me a real guy with the muscles on top of muscles and that, that arm looks, looks like a challah, like the challah bread, the big fat arm with the, and his, his personal trainer and his name, Dash. Dash! I have a punctuation teaching me how to lift. And Dash is as dumb as sheetrock. But he tries to impress you how he knows in the body, like, yeah, when you're working the bar this way, what you're basically doing is you're basically working out your by, uh, your by, uh, um, your by cuspids, yeah. <laughs> and he tells me I should be eating those balance bars, those protein bars. I went, I bought one, thought it was gonna help me stay thin and trim. The thing has 385 calories and tastes like compressed sand that came out of a camel's ass. <laughs> Next to is a Snickers bar, 220 calories, the most delicious thing I ever had in my life. Delicious. It says you gotta do cardio, lots of cardio, yeah! Yeah, lots of cardio. It tells me to take a spin class. Clap is never taking a spin class. Let me rephrase that. Orthodox Jews, let me tell you what a spin class is. It's a full hour jumping up and down and up and down and up on a steady bike for a full hour, up and down. I got off that bike after an hour. I felt like I was in prison for a weekend. And the guy that taught the class, the guy, Sebastian. <laughs> he comes in with his bedazzled tank top and says, we're gonna do a half hour incline, decline, valley ride with an uphill descent. So where are you going? The bike only has one wheel. I love this guy's blazer with the gold buttons. Look at this guy, how are you? Who, who's this guy, who's this guy? Anybody important? He's important? Do you have a boat? I feel like you should be a captain or something. Boat! Do you guys go on cruises? Do you own a cruise line? Oh my god, worst thing of my life, believe it or not. Worst thing. I did a show on a cruise. Clap if you take a cruise. There we go. See, I gotta make sure that the non Jewish people are happy getting married. Did you enjoy the cruise? It was the worst thing of my life. I'm not gonna mention the cruise line, Norwegian. I'm never going back, I don't care. They told me we'll give you first class accommodations, right? They gave me that boarding card that says you'll be staying on the Biscayne level. I had no idea Biscayne was the Norwegian word for basement. I was still in the bottom of the ship when I opened the curtain, I saw propellers. Miss, I, I heard whales farting at night. That's how in the bottom of the ship I was. 
The first five minutes you're on, they do a lifeboat drill. Everybody's going, where did I go? My life ticket, where did I go in case? I said, lady, the boat's going through the Caribbean. I don't know how many icebergs we're gonna hit down there. But don't laugh. Don't laugh. The first night we had bad weather and the boat was rocking up and down and left and right and those waves were smashing against my, my Biscayne suite. And I thought I heard the other. Like, What it was, the housekeeper above was vacuuming. And the food, the food, the carnage that went on on this ship, these people ate like they had two assholes just pushing all. Thank God Malka wasn't here for that one. They ate, the, the carnage on this ship was unbelievable. I, did you go to the buffet? You guys go to the buffet? I went there just for material. I saw a woman turn to her husband and say, I hope they have enough food for seven days. She says, the way you're eating, I hope they have enough toilet paper for seven days. <laughs> the best thing at the, at the buffets is the, is the couples. There's two types of couples. You have the honeymooners, the newlyweds. Honey, darling, try this. It's as precious as you are. Life with you will be one big vacation. And then you have the couples that have been like, Married for 30, or 50, or 90 years. <laughs> Mary! I'm waiting for my, I'm waiting for dessert, you're gonna get a stroke and ruin my vacation! <laughs> that same woman came to me and said, you're very funny, we enjoyed your show. Are you staying on the ship? <laughs> you're very making yummy, did you get that one, sir? Look of the ocean. Very nice, very nice. What's up, man? I didn't see you. Are you rapping later? <laughs> that hat is the yo. All right, all right. Man, anything else we could talk about? Do you know what I realize everybody here has a smart car now in, uh, in, really? in uh, Borough Park? I, I was the original. What are you laughing so hard? What is so funny? You have a smart car? What do you, I have a smart car. I'm not kidding. When you leave the, the club, when you leave the, when you leave the owned by this company building, <laughs> make, make a right and look, my car, it's parked right there on the mailbox. That's my smart car. And don't laugh at it, man. When it, it's, the, it's the best. You forget you're in it when you're in it. I'm on the highway doing, doing 75. You forget you're driving a dishwasher. <laughs> I go to change lanes, I look over and realize the car and I go, ah! And there's no ego in a smart car. No ego whatsoever. Like in a Honda Odyssey. There's no ego. None. The way the people give you the most, the most, the most dismissive looks in the world. I lived in LA, right? I lived in LA. I had my, I used to drive my friend's Maserati around. You pull up with a red light with a Maserati, people look at you, it humbles them. But you pull up at a red light with a smart car, people look at you like you're driving a toilet. Oh my God, honey, don't scare, don't, is he wiping his ass? What are you doing over there? Don't look, don't look! But one thing's for sure, no cop is ever pulling me over, ever. Because no cop wants to be that big of a schmuck. They pull over guys with big BMWs because they know we enjoy going, ah ha, BMW, we're happy about that. You see a guy with a smart car, go, officer, come on! The guy's life's a mess! He's driving a toaster oven, would you? <laughs> Fun. We have a little more. Of how, I, I don't want to hold. I'm, I'm the opening act to a par of dessert. Do you understand that? They're going to bring some dessert here that looks like ice cream, but it's really not. It's going to look like what's on the top of the... Is this milk or whatever is busy here? Whatever it is busy. This is the worst night of your life, isn't it? <laughs> Standing there while I'm telling jokes and you have to pretend you're not really here. How are you? Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's start wrapping this up, folks. Any questions? Any questions? We didn't do anything Jewy. I kept it very neutral. No, you guys, anybody here, anybody here from Hatsala? You guys know what Hatsala is? <laughs> You don't know what Hatsala is? What do you know from Hatsala? It's the ambulances. See, Jews had to make their own ambulance corps. What is his brother than Hatsala? Where? Shlomo. Where's Shlomo? 
Someone has worse ADD than you, is that what it is? <laughs> Off the chart, you really, you're like, a, you have the attention span of a crack baby. You're... The Jews had to make their own ambulance corps because no one was picking us up. <laughs> so we stand and go, no, my husband, no, he felt, ma'am, we're not coming to pick up your husband, goodbye. So they all organized themselves and did fundraisers. Non-stop, Jews are always raising money for something. After this night, after here, he's got three events to go to, to raise money. Uh, the Chenya, Chava, Chemi, Chanani, and that's just the Chuz. Then you have the Havienu, Hashivenu, Habienu, Tiferet, Tiferet Malga, Tiferet Nechama, Tiferet, 19 organizations raising money for something. Something. I, did, I just did it, I just did one. I did a, an organization called Bone Olam. Anybody hear this? There you go. There you go. Did you, you heard of it? Okay. I got you. I'm with you. I'm with you. It's a Hasidic organization that raises money for women that need in vitro shots. An amazing world. I had no idea what the hell they do. The rabbi called me up directly and spoke to me in what sounded very much like English. <laughs> hello, hello. My name is Rabbi Brich Brasvergen. And I work with the organization for the Dona Island. And we work with women who are trying to get pregnant and we need your help. I'm available at 5.30. Martha would have died from that one, huh? That was the worst for her. That was a, oh, I tell her, she was so good that she brought you a clown or something, right? Oh, that's right. All right, let's wrap this up. Yeah. As I was saying, we have our own ambulance corps. Is that amazing? Is that amazing? Huh? Huh? Mallory? Anything? Exactly, and you shouldn't know. I experienced Hatzalah, the Jewish Ambulance Corps, personally. My friend got sick, really sick. I took him to, to Beth Israel to get sicker. <laughs> what a dumb. You guys own that too? No. <laughs> Dental, whatever it is. <laughs> and we're in the ER, we're in the emergency room, right by where all the ambulances come in, one after the next. Got the worst seat tonight. <laughs> Right in the ER, where all the ambulances are coming in. What, the EMT, EMS, FDR, da 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 da, fire department, everyone, big guys, stormtroopers, with the, the hats and the, the cargo and the doing compression, saving lives, one after the next. All of a sudden, the Han Solo truck pulls up. <laughs> You would never know it was an ambulance. It's got so much Hebrew written on the side. Everyone that sent in $18 has their name written across it. It's like a wall from Yad Vashem. Right? And then the guys, the nine guys pour out of there. Each one bigger than the next. Hello! Keys and keys and fax machines and radios and, and they got and, uh, and wires and guns and lights and sirens and you've never seen. Nine, and the patient wasn't even in a bed. It was in a, in a chair. They slept like in a chair. Some grandmother took on a piece of chalab shit. That's some disgusting crap we eat during the holiday. And then they put, and they were the, they're the only ones that the patient is in better shape than they are. Every other ambulance guy is giving it over to the nurse, right? It's 130 over 80, 29 with a BPC and a CPP. And a the other guy's, hey, do you know Steve Shapiro from cardiology? Yeah, that's my brother in law. Yeah, she knows Shimmy. Every other ambulance guy is going back on the road, taking more stuff, more IVs. Where, where, where the Hatzala guys go? Beaker Holland. <laughs> You have no idea what that is. There's a part of the hospital that's only for us. <laughs> All right, now listen, we're finished here. We had a good time, I had a good time. Let me rephrase that, I got paid. Which for me is a good time. And uh, this is, I mean, very impressive that you guys own all these things and still make money. <laughs>
Uh, well, what? That's not a big. Uh, that's not a big problem. There's one guy I met that sent in four million today. If you can own me like that, if you want, <laughs> four million is right at my price right now. Have a happy, healthy holiday. Have lots of fun. I should have a year. This should be the, the uh, a year of laughter at work. Lots of laughs and a good time.